Dan Chunk, I hope you're having a great summer. Welcome into the game in T-Town. Thanks, Ryan. Always great being with you and the great fans of the University of Alabama. And, uh, yeah, i tell you what, uh, Alabama is going to be uh, loaded again. And uh, just a matter of uh, how many of those juniors come out, I guess. But, uh, you know, there's a long way to go. Hopefully everybody stays healthy and um, – they get out there and get after it because um, there's no shortage of talent on that Alabama roster. Well, and I certainly want to pick your brain for a couple of minutes, but I also want to tell you something that I use every single day. I have a certain number of websites that I pull up, and the college football depth charts is so conveniently for all of us in radio because, you know, somebody may call you and ask you about the running back at Florida or LSU. The It's easy to navigate. OurLads.com, they got every college football depth chart uh, known to man. Now, we're not going to tell Nick Saban. He doesn't call it a depth chart. He calls it a rep chart. Rep chart. So, uh, Alabama's got a rep chart. Everybody else has got a depth chart. You can find it on ourlads.com. Great work there uh, putting all that content together. Thank you very much. Yeah, I tell you what, it's uh, and it's ongoing too, Ryan. As you know, things are so volatile and fluid. Um, you know, guys get nicked up and uh, they got to get put down on the injured uh, list there at the bottom. And uh, unfortunately, Joshua McMillan made that list the other day and uh, looking forward to, you know, seeing him again and, and uh, when he's healthy and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I tell you what, uh, there and all these transfers too, holy cow, across the country this year. I mean, it was like, um, you know, we, we zeroed in on the depth charts that started the summer and we're honing them up and then, we come back through again this week, you know, to polish and, and do some other things. And holy smokes, guys are heading to the portal and all that. So it's one thing about Alabama, you know, for the most part, you know, of course, hurts the left and, you know, we understand that. But at least Alabama is pretty stable. You go to Alabama, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're going to stick with that program. Let me get some picking your brain here for just a couple of minutes. I, I want to stay on this offensive line and, and, and really focus on these guys. A guy like Alex Leatherwood, does he have the potential to be a first rounder when you look at Alex Leatherwood, the left tackle here uh, in Tuscaloosa, moving out from guard to tackle in 2019? You know, the thing that's so tough, Ryan, is that, you know, the guys are going to have 13 and 14 more games or sure. what have you. And, of course, he, like you said, he was a guard, and now you got to see what he can do outside at uh, left tackle. But uh, he's certainly a talented guy. You know, some teams may kick him back inside and have him be a guard, uh, you know, next, you know, whenever he decides to come out, because obviously he's a junior, but um, when, you know, whenever he decides to come out. But, um, you know, this year there's kind of a mixed bag. There looks like there's going to be a decent group of tackles, and that always, you know, kind of the, that that really uh, sets the bar where guys like Leatherwood would go and and what have you. But you know, last year Trey Adams from Washington was one of the top guys out there, and uh, unfortunately he got injured and he missed most of the season. And you know, coming into this season, he might be the tenth or twelfth best tackle. So sometimes you just don't know with injury stuff. But Leatherwood has got talent. It's just imagine that, or we just got to see him, you know, take another step forward uh, this coming fall, especially at a new position because it's a little tough, tougher out there when you don't have, you know, people on each side of you, uh, like Perchenbacher, you know, and of course, and helping him on the inside. And now he's outside on that island. So we'll just have to see about the big guy. Let me ask you about Jerry Judy. What is the ceiling? Because a lot of people keep saying that he may potentially be the best player in college football. Where do you see Jerry Judy? What is the ceiling for him? Yeah, I tell you what, he, I, I would agree with that. I mean, this, this guy is a terrific football player that, well, I want to tell you, Alabama may have two first-round wide receivers, you know, certainly if they both come out with rugs and, you know, and, and uh, Judy coming out. But, you know, Judy's explosiveness and, um, I, you know, there's always rumors out there what guys run and things like that. But I know that uh, he just kind of, rolls right by secondaries and you know everybody wants those fast guys out there that can uh, take the top off the secondary and he's such a big play guy I, you know I mean he's going to be you know in my opinion I could throw him right in the top five right now and of course as we all know quarterbacks always 
kind of get up there, you know, that first or second pick of the draft. But Judy's going to be up there, uh, you know, and, and um, I you know, of course, they're, they're, I mean, and then Ruggs is going to probably be in the first round if he comes out, as long as, you know, as long as the guys take another step forward and just keep improving. And that's, that's of course, what that's what it's all about. Because I tell you, you can look at these guys all summer and say, hey, boom, Judy is maybe the best player in this draft. But then, you know, come fall, sure. you know, if he's injured or something, then, hey, all bets are off. Well, and then you think about a next year, which is Jalen Waddle. I mean, everybody says he's a, probably a first round wide receiver, Jalen Waddle. So, I mean, they may have three, if not four, wide receivers because even some people talk about Devontae Smith as a guy that could be a you know a high pick uh, draft as far as a wide receiver. Yeah, they're you know Alabama, it, it, as we all know, uh, they they don't uh, you know they they just reload every year. So you know, and 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 of course. These guys came in and played as freshmen and things, but so that's how impressive they are. Now they're heading in their junior year, and uh, we'll be all be excited to see if they can pick it up. And uh, that trigger man uh, is as accurate as he has been uh, his past couple years. Uh, Tua will uh, put some big big points on the board. Dan, as final couple of questions, we're talking to Dan Shanka, ourlads.com. How much are you guys in the NFL business when you talk about scouting and looking at players? Are you looking at Tua Tungvaloa staying healthy? Not that you question any skill set. He's got that to be a first-round guy. But as far as staying healthy, is that one of the things that you guys will put him under a microscope this year? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the number. Now, what what you do, Ryan, is you'll grade these guys out, okay? Now, okay, Tua, uh, he will grade out as an early first round guy, maybe the top pick in this draft because his accuracy, um, his uh, anticipation, uh, he had, his footwork, all, all, I mean, all this thing, is, and you're looking at that. Okay, now, okay, we like him there, but, okay, has the guy been in trouble off the field? No, he's clean. We like that. But how about this injury? You know, he's got an injury history. Last year he played injured, you know, kind of, didn't let anybody know, which is a good thing. Uh, but he was injured, really. What about nine games? I think last year of some, you know, some sort where he wasn't a hundred percent, and uh, then he was nicked up, of course, the year before. So you ha- that has to go into the mix. Now, you know, some teams will, as long as your doctors, your team doctors, will approve him, and they'll believe me, they'll twist, turn, yank. You know, if he wasn't injured going to combine, he might be coming out. But uh, They'll check that all out, and if, and if all the doctors say, "Hey, this guy's fine. He had a freak accident the year before," or he, you know, unless they find something that, you know, some guys just have a tendency to get to, and um, so yes, uh, hey, number one, the kid's a player. They're going to be number two. He's clean off the field and everything. That's great. And then uh, now his injury uh, history. How is it? Raekwon Davis comes back for his senior season here in Tuscaloosa. What's the ceiling for Raekwon Davis, in your opinion? Yeah, I tell you what, he's going to be one of the top defensive linemen out there in a year that we may have some really good defensive linemen. So, you know, I think that uh, the sky's the limit for him. It's just a matter of um, how everything in his production comes together and uh, how, um, I mean, he, he's a big play guy. He can do some, so many good things. So I think that uh, Davis, I mean, to me, he's a first-round guy. I mean, we got him, um, we got, shoot, we got six guys, I think, right now headed in the fall that, you know, Alabama's going to have in that first round. And uh, with, you know, Judy and Davis and uh, Tua, you know, Diggs may very well be. Hey, Moses, if he has a great year, he could be. So, you know, that's a pretty good start of, uh, you know, guys. Final question, Dan Shanka. Freddie Kitchens, Alabama guy up in Cleveland. Are you buying that this team is going to be new and improved Cleveland Browns in 2019? Hey, I tell you, I've always loved Freddie. I mean, he's a football guy. He plays football. Um, I think it's going to be good for him to be around those guys. And and certainly, uh, you know, with Baker Mayfield. I mean, Baker, (laughs) I'm I'm not so sure that, you know, they're just different generations of guys, you know, Freddie and and, – and Baker, I mean, Baker, Freddie's good for, for Baker, and Baker's going to be good for Freddie. And uh, so I think that they're going to explode up there in Cleveland. Believe me, hey, as you know, I was a real, I was a way early front runner on Baker Mayfield, and all he did is, you know, 
uh, he was held back by the old head coach up there for about three or four games, but he goes out there and starts torching people the minute he gets on the field, and Freddie's going to you know, let him go, uh, you know, turn him loose with all those uh, big-time receivers up there. And Hey, their offense ought to be explosive. And the, the only – the sticky wicket is, you know, you've got to – you got to make sure that offensive line holds up because uh, that's the key. But Baker, Baker makes it happen now, as you all know. Dan Chanka, you enjoy the next couple of weeks, and we'll certainly get football started. We'll try to feature you in the fall. I always appreciate the conversations, Dan. Let me invite people. A very informative website, ourlads.com, ourlads.com. We've got it as one of our favorites here inside the studio as we pull up the depth chart around the University of Alabama and all college football teams. Dan, as always, we thank you so much for your time. Have a great fall, man. Roll Tide. Thanks, Ryan.